Good afternoon again. This is Brian Hodson from Oz Development, and welcome to the webinar. Uh, we're going to get started now. Um, you know, good morning for the folks on the West Coast. Just before we start with the content, I just wanted to do a couple of housekeeping details. Uh, everyone on the call has been muted, uh, but if you do have questions, feel free to ask questions through the GoToWebinar tool. We'll try to answer those questions as we go, but we also have some time at the end to make sure we address uh, any of the questions. If we do run out of time, certainly we will follow up with each of the questions that come through that we don't get to. The other piece is sometimes, depending on the resolution of your screen, you may see a partial of the screens uh, of the slides of the demo. And at the top left of your GoToWebinar viewer, there's a Zoom button. So you can adjust, hopefully, and make sure you get a full, full view of what we're talking about. Uh, so with that, uh, I'd like to get started. Also with me here is Justin Donahue who leads our UPS team in terms of automating, extending UPS World Chip. Uh, Justin, you want to say a couple words? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome. Um, got some exciting stuff here to show you today, and uh, I guess we can just get right to it here, Brian. Excellent. Um, so in terms of the agenda, uh, just a quick discussion, sort of update on Oz developments to understand what the various solutions we have. Uh, we tend to spend a fair bit of time we talk about the capabilities and the ability to leverage Auslink to extend WorldChip, uh, but we usually weave it into customer case studies and, and scenarios, use, real use cases, where we've worked with customers in the field. And we find that that's just the best way to um, sort of illustrate it, because it, it really brings it to life, there's some real real world scenarios. And they often apply in different customer environments. So that's how we're going to go about today. We will have a demo at the end. Uh, showing uh, a newer capability we call the Weather API, uh, which is really a pretty pretty slick um, sort of technology that allows you to incorporate destination sort of temperatures into your shipping process. But we'll talk about that in a little more detail as we go. As I said, feel free to ask questions as we uh, step through this, and, and we'll try to address each and every one. So company, the company's name is Oz Development. All of our solutions are branded Auslink, which is you know, typically a, a little better known name. Um, we've been around a little over 12 years. We've had really great success working with UPS and expanding in the market. Uh, last year, we won a number of awards recognized by the trade magazines. Uh, some of them are, are highlighted here. Uh, we're based outside of Boston uh, in Massachusetts. Um, there's a, a business journal here that runs a competition for the fastest growing private companies. So we won an award for that. Um, and we've spent, uh, you know, beyond the company, the management team and, and the engineers here have really been working at automating, streamlining, shipping uh, for over 20 years. We've worked very close with UPS. We're part of the UPS Ready program. Uh, a few years ago, we were elevated to the strategic level. Uh, and our solutions really span a broad set of processes from order entry and rating in the front office through to shipping. And I'll talk a bit more about each of those solutions and the focus today. Uh, so with that breadth of solution, we really feel that any customer that's using UPS can leverage uh, something from Oz Development, OzLink, to improve the process. So in terms of the this OzLink solutions, and, and there's a family of solutions called OzLink for UPS, uh, there's four different uh, offerings. Uh, on the bottom left is simply OzLink for UPS. It's a rating tool typically used in the front office. Uh, and it allows customers to, you know, maybe they're on the phone, telesale, telemarketing person on the phone with the customer, they can quickly quote the cost of a shipment to their customer. Uh, it includes, you can look at negotiated rate or uh, list rate, includes freight uh, services, uh, and that's a free solution that customers can activate right from the OzLink, Oz development site. The next solution up to the right is what we call OzLink for UPS Plus. It's a more advanced rating solution uh, that provides things like multi-package, uh, 100 weight, includes some services like SurePost, um, and also has the ability to show both negotiated and list rates on the same screen. That, again, typically the same user, uh, someone in that front office, it starts at $16 a month per user, and there's a multi-user pack as well. And customers can get started with that really by activating that on the website, uh, on the OzLink website. 
And Brian, just, just to interject, um, we do have a dedicated training session specifically for those two products available every Friday at 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So if there's some interest in sort of learning some more about Auslink for UPS and, and the, the Plus version, um, you can just head right to our website, which will be at the end of the presentation here, and sign up for that webinar as well. Yeah, that's an excellent point. And, and that Plus also has a very unique uh, capability to do rating and shipping from an Excel uh, file. Uh, so it, it really it can be a very powerful tool, very cost-effective uh, solution. The top two solutions are really focused on streamlining the shipping process. So Auslink for UPS Pro integrates UPS WorldShip with a couple accounting systems, NetSuite and QuickBooks. So if you're running either of those accounting systems uh, and shipping with UPS, this solution is self-serve. Again, it can be activated straight from the Oz development website. And you can integrate WorldShip with either QuickBooks or NetSuite literally in five minutes. Uh, so a great place to start. That starts at $29 a month. The focus of today is really around Auslink for UPS Custom. And it has a whole set of extensions um, that we can provide. And we end up tailoring that specifically to a customer scenario, really streamlining and optimizing a specific customer's business process to you know, whether that's improved productivity in the warehouse, improved accuracy, throughput, what have you. Um, and that solution it has, has some setup implementation fees as well as a monthly subscription. Uh, that's engaged, the, the sort of engagement model is we go through and, and sort of spend some time with a customer understanding, hey, where are the opportunities for savings? Um, and then tailoring that solution, delivering that solution. Uh, so as I said, that's the focus of today's session today. Uh, the, for the rest of this uh, webinar. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we tend to leverage a customer scenario. So this one really is a pretty interesting story with that we did an implementation for big ass fans. And they have they do a lot of marketing around you know promoting their you know, the warehouse. You I may have some of their their goods in your warehouse. The big fans that are they'll keep things dry keeping the air circulating, those sort of things. Now, to sell that, they tend to do a lot of giveaways. You know, they may have a big-ass fans mug and a hat that they're going to give away. So this automation is really around the fulfillment of that, those marketing materials. And they would have these campaigns set up uh, with, as I said, maybe it's a mug and a cup. Uh, and their salespeople are calling out, you know, calling on their customers and then saying, oh, I'm going to send them some of this uh, marketing fulfillment kit. They enter that um, into Pardot, which is their marketing automation. That flows automatically into Salesforce uh, as a task in Salesforce. At that point, you know, Oslink from a batch process picks up all those in Salesforce, runs a pre uh, before looking at the shipping, runs a sort of batch pre-address validation against those uh, shipments marks them in Salesforce whether they need to be maybe reviewed and corrected and updated to avoid address correction fees. And then for the ones that uh, are, are fine and valid address, goes and creates a batch labels for shipping. Uh, and this ended up cutting down you know, a tremendous amount of clerical work because prior to this integration and automation, they had a, someone manually looking up at each of those tasks in Salesforce, creating the shipment world ship, typing the tracking number back in, um, and this, you know, just simply eliminated all that, a few hours a day of that time, uh, and increased their throughput by 28%. You know, one of the key items here with, with this specific engagement is if you think about what it takes to create a shipment on the world ship side of the house, you know, we need that shipping weight. <clears throat> and whereas their items may be, you know, a thousand coffee mugs assigned to a specific shipping campaign, we're able to automate sort of the selection of that weight process by allowing the user to enter it just a single time to maybe create, you know, a hundred or a thousand shipments in that example. So, you know, the batch process for this is fairly elegant. It allows them, as, as Brian mentioned, to sort of cut that clerical work down and just, you know, know that I have a number of orders, create the labels for that number of orders, and quickly get those those uh, products out the door. Um. <clears throat> so uh, here you'll see a, a lot of times we'll get questions from both customers and sort of our UPS team out there. You know, hey, what are the systems that, that Oslink currently can integrate with? Um, and here you'll see sort of a partial list, both on the kind of CRM e-commerce side as well as ERP accounting. 
Um, this list kind of speaks to the scalability Brian discussed as part of our introduction. You know, you see on the, the ERP side, we, we do have integrations available for smaller entrepreneurial, you know, kind of startup type scenarios with QuickBooks, Peachtree, et cetera, all the way up through some of the more robust um, cloud solutions like NetSuite, Financial Force SCM, um, and some of the even the larger on-prem type ERPs, Oracle SAPs, the Microsoft Dynamics family. Um, as well as in the e-commerce world, sort of you know your your usual suspects, your Volusion, your Magento, uh, Amazon, eBay, and the unique thing about the scalability is the solution of the solution uh, with Auslan Custom specifically is that we're able to leverage the native capabilities of these systems to manage the data transfer. So, um, you know, new ERPs or, or general connectivity to one of the existing ERPs um, can typically be tailored to that customer's specific requirements. Um, again, this is just a partial list. There are many, many more. Um, if you don't use one of these, we, we certainly have other capabilities. If you have questions directly, um, you know, we can, we're happy to answer those for you as well. <clears throat> we talked a little bit about pre-ship address validation when we were discussing Big Ass fans a moment ago. And, and really, the driver for them specifically, and for most customers that use this type of add-on, um, it is managing those address correction fees that happen when you incorrectly capture that address information. UPS has a set of what they call developer kit APIs that allow Auslink to retrieve information and use that information to analyze a particular attribute of the order. So if I have 100 orders sitting in my ERP system and I want to go uh, kind of approve those for fulfillment, Auslink can run a process to, to return information about whether or not that address is you know, valid or ambiguous based on UPS's requirements. Um, typically, we, we set this up either to be kind of a button click by somebody um, to initiate the process, or it can even be set on just a, um, like a timed type basis. Um, obviously, the ability to correct and update those specific, um, you know, addresses perhaps that were slightly off from a formatting perspective or something like that saves quite a bit of money and time, um, whereas it's a batch process and certainly that UPS kind of dings you from a charges perspective the address correction specifically. And there's a couple of interesting things in terms of what we say. One is this is upstream, so you're not, you're doing it at the, at the most cost effective point before, you know, maybe pick that item or, or you're, you know, ready to ship it out and produce the label or, you know, if you ship it out with the invalid address and get that, that cost hit, uh, that's the most expensive, especially, never mind if it's just a correction, what if it's your wrong, the wrong address completely. Uh, those can be very costly. So this is done upstream prior to that order hitting the, the warehouse. And then the other element is, the depending on the host that we're, we're integrating with, we can go in and update a flag right in. So, so in the case of Big Ass Fans, it's right in Salesforce. So they're in that system updating and correcting it, as opposed to looking at a file and, and then logging back into the system and finding that order and updating it. So it, it really can, it really dramatically streamlines that process of, review and, and often we end up customers using it as part of their order review process. Uh, you know, part of their step might be uh, I'm checking the checking the address. Now instead of if they're doing 60, 70 orders a day, instead of having to check a lot, they can say, okay, here's the 10 that were flagged, I'm going to go correct those. The other remaining sort of 80, 85 percent can flow automatically through to the warehouse and get fulfilled uh, in a timely fashion. The other thing to keep in mind with regard to this type of module is that uh, we're really just relying on that UPS data set, and then Auslink provides analysis. So it can exist really in, in, inside the customer's process in a specific way that makes sense for their business. Um, it's not sort of off the shelf, if you would. It can be fully customized to support specific process requirements, <clears throat> as can all of the modules <laughs> that, that we'll kind of see here today. Uh, this is a great example of kind of a direct shipping engagement, and, and we're going to step through this customer scenario um, kind of step by step here. Um, the customer, we, we have a customer down in Georgia that's um, a pretty large UPS shipper, and, and part of that um, sort of growth that they've experienced over the past couple of years is, is largely uh, due to the fact that they partner with UPS and, and Oz Development directly. They came into us, uh, I think it was about April of 2013, um, and asked us to automate their Groupon channel. They sell mattresses, and they sort of manage some overstock and, and kind of discontinued items through Groupon, which, you know, in this example, I guess you could say is sort of a clearinghouse for them. 
in this particular example, Groupon has some, some stringent requirements about how customers are to be sort of managed because Groupon actually manages that relationship um, solely 100%. You know, the vendor is kind of completely transparent within the Groupon customer relationship. So the two requirements specifically are that um, you have to use their, their interface portal, which is called Commerce Interface, and it's a bit, a bit like an EDI type transaction where they just send you a list of transactions that you're to fulfill, and then you can kind of upload your tracking information. Well, from a manual perspective, if you're doing you know, 50 or 100 shipments per day, uh, managing the data uh, becomes quite cumbersome. The second component that they, they Groupon requires <clears throat> is a branded Groupon packing slip. So what we did here at Oz Development was we built sort of an adapter to go into Commerce Interface, pull out all those new orders, and we created uh, the packing slip and the shipping label in an all-in-one document, which we'll dive into a little deeper here in just a little, uh, just a second, but it's branded to Groupon's requirements. So the customer has, again, going back to sort of what it takes to process an order through WorldShip, I'm selling one type of mattress through a Groupon goods event. That mattress typically has the same weight. So I can go ahead and batch process these labels knowing just the weight of the single item, create the pack slip, create the shipping label, and really the customer's responsibility, or the, the vendor's responsibility rather, at this point in the process is just to grab that group of combination pack slips off the printer and start to go pack and then you know, peel the label off, put it on the side of the box, and they're ready to go. So very quickly we're able to manage this process from, from a data interchange perspective and cut their sort of productivity time um, down quite significantly. And the Groupon represents a trend we're seeing uh, in the market in terms of you know, customers talking about sort of different channels and you know, whether it's called the omni-channel or, or multiple channel or whether the e-commerce. I mean, about two and a half years ago, Groupon initiated this Groupon goods business unit, which was you know, similar to selling to the restaurant and, and sort of hotel type pricing at a deal. They do deal of the day on these goods. Now they have about 2,500, it's probably more now up to 3,000 suppliers that are fulfilling on their behalf. Uh, and as, as Justin said, the, the, the sort of identity, the relationship was with Groupon, um, but the, the, the network and so that marketplace, other customers we see coming on and saying, hey, we're now selling you know, through Groupon. Staples is another one that's now announced a, a marketplace where they'll sell goods uh, to their base and, and enable suppliers to sell through that channel. So the more these spokes that are coming into your warehouse provide a slightly different process. And in this case, you know, another customer we have, they do headphones, they do different colors. So as uh, Justin had said, we print these out in batch, but if you have different SKUs based on color, the weights and dimensions are all the same, but you may have a different SKU based on color or size. We can sort those pack slips by SKU to really streamline that workflow in the in the warehouse. Yep, to use Brian's example, we have a customer that sells headphones through Groupon. They offer them in multiple colors, so when we create their batch of labels using this same process, we, we've kind of grouped the red ones together, then the blue, then the black, so it becomes very easy to go pick those um, orders in an efficient fashion without having to sort of wander around in the warehouse. Yeah, and, and if you think about, you know, beyond the vendor guide, which is, look, hey, orders coming in today have to be shipped out tomorrow, uh, by end of day, that puts a fair burden on the labor in the warehouse, especially if you're running an event, let's say shipping 150, 200 orders a day normally, you run a group on event, all of a sudden in addition to your standard orders, you have another 100 orders, uh, you really want to make sure that's streamlined so you don't necessarily, okay, we've got to hire two more people for that day, you know, that's going to eat into that margin, so being able to streamline that process and do it with that, you know, same labor uh, becomes really critical to make that deal profitable. Great example, Brian. Um, the combo pack slip here I'm going to talk about, but just for continuity, I'm going to skip that slide for just a moment. Um, this same customer here, talking sort of about spokes in the warehouse and understanding um, how to manage different sort of order volumes from different order sources, this same customer um, now does about 150 orders per batch event, whereas they started with only you know a dozen or so. Um, and that growth is sort of, again, solely attributed to the partnerships that they've chosen to employ. That being said, they've purchased um, now three more kind of other spoke applications specific to other order sources that they have for their business. So they have a, a Volusion website that we manage with another batch process <clears throat> with a real-time integration that pulls orders out that customers place directly through their website. They also have a AAA channel where AAA members are uh, eligible for discounts 
um, if they place orders through the AAA portal for their product, and that kind of works the same way Groupon does. And even recently, not encapsulated on this slide here, they've added another sort of flash sale site, Woot.com. So now they have multiple Oslink applications managing all the spokes or order sources that they kind of have. And with the set of business rules and, and the sort of creation of their pack slips um, in a batch type fashion, the data element of managing these um, order sources becomes very transparent. They can focus on getting boxes out the door. Um, so that really speaks to you know, the management from, from a truly custom perspective with different type scenarios and also the scalability of the Oslink solution. You know, these were four different applications that the customer purchased at different times and now you know, really Oslink is, is a, a very integral part of their warehouse order management. Now, and, and that's a good thing to keep in mind. Customers typically will come, and I call it the, so the leaky pipe uh, scenario. They have a pain point in the warehouse relative to shipping that, again, it might be, look, we have to manually create the pack slips. We have to manually email our customers. Uh, and they can automate that one missing capability with Oslink. Then they leverage that savings to fix the next leaky pipe. And uh, the scalability and sort of the modularity of the platform allows customers to sort of invest as it fits based on their business and where they're going to get payback and productivity improvements. You know, you talk about you know multiple applications and multiple spokes in the warehouse, and, and automation and cost savings can be boiled down to even just a simple change in the warehouse. And the examples we just gave um, for all of those applications that that mattress company uses. They, they generate, or we generate, Oslink generates for them what we call the combo pack slip and UPS label that we saw in the Groupon component. Um, this is sort of a generic example of that pack slip and UPS label. And very simply, the time savings associated with having to marry shipping labels up directly to packing slips, if you have 100, 150 orders per day, that might take you 25 minutes or a half hour. So having the document available just go kind of pack right into the box, peel off the label and ship, is, is in, in and of itself sort of an inherent cost savings. Um, also, this technology can be leveraged in multiple different ways. We have customers that sell clothing online, um, sort of in a retail scenario. And, and a lot of the times, customers will want to return, you know, because the fit wasn't right or they didn't expect to, you know, receive the item, doesn't look quite the way they, they anticipated, et cetera. So, We'll create an outbound shipping label on a regular thermal printer, and then we'll create a return services label on the pack slip at the bottom, and, and then maybe the pack slip and return instructions on the top portion. This is kind of fully customizable to support any type of situation. Uh, another one that pops into mind is a customer of ours that we have that does kind of gourmet chocolates and things of that nature. Um, they use the pack slip <clears throat> and um, UPS label model. But they add one key feature. With each one of their orders, the, uh, the buyer has the ability to send a gift message with, within that box. They, they use some label stock that supports a little tear-off message card. So the documentation now stays with that order throughout the entire pick-pack process. And you know, they eliminate, eliminate some of the embarrassment of including the wrong gift message within you know, the, the wrong box. So, so just keeping that documentation together throughout the process, um, you know, kind of eliminates errors inherently and certainly cuts down on, on, you know, the creation time to actually go out and start to pick those orders. Um, this module is uh, really one of the most common ones we have. We call it a branded email. Uh, what it allows uh, the customer to do is as they're processing that shipment real time, send out an email confirmation to the customer highlighting, you know, your order has shipped, here's the tracking number, potentially including the contents of that order. Um, and you know, it, it always surprises me how, you know, given that the technology and email has been around and whenever I order something online, I'm always getting one of these, that you know, so there's still a fair number of customers. And a lot of it's based on the, the sort of ERP system that customers are running. I mean, the order, the order detail content sits in that ERP system, and if it's in a legacy older system, it doesn't have the ability to send an email. Uh, the tracking number sits in WorldShip. So the fact that we have these two systems integrated, being able to layer on top an email, 
and send that out becomes very powerful. Uh, not only does it cut down on the calls, you know, where's my shipment, but they can be used. That you, you can create a template where you can use it as a sales and marketing tool, you know, reinforcing your brand, putting coupons in for the next purchase. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility in that template that you can control and edit, uh, and we leverage that data, we really leverage that template and insert the data from that order and from the UPS tracking. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's probably the most popular module and extension that we do beyond that sort of core base integration. And again, from a custom perspective, we have customers that leverage multiple templates based on different, you know, or channels, for example. So, you know, I've got three or four different branded websites that I want to support with a different branded email template. Um, you know, Oslink has the ability to sort of choose and route the appropriate email template for the customer based on the order source. So, so this can be as simple as just a shipment notification or more of sort of a customer, customer management tool throughout the shipment notification process and even drive business back to the website for additional purchases. Yeah, I mean, another use case I've seen, this is you know, clearly a sort of a B2C consumer type model, uh, but I've also seen it in cases where you know, maybe a part, a spare part is going out and you want to send an email to the technician so they know the tracking number and they're meeting that part at the customer to do maybe some preventative maintenance or what have you. Uh, so coordinating it with other activities around that shipment is also a use case that we've seen. Um, and then similar to branded email, you know, the growth in e-commerce, we're seeing more and more customers shipping on behalf of the large retailers. You know, innovative products are coming out, people are walking into these stores and saying, you know, I want to buy these uh, items. The, the large retailers don't necessarily want to carry all that inventory in the store, or even, even on their e-commerce site, they don't want to carry that inventory. So we have more and more customers coming saying, well, I'm shipping on behalf of JCPenney or Sears drop shipping, and I really need to streamline that process. Uh, so at ship time, being able to automatically produce that branded pack slip, maintaining that vendor relationship, that vendor guide, similar to the Groupon, it has to be branded to that large customer. So it looks like it's coming from JCPenney or Sears. Uh, and not having that person at your ship station remember, having to remember or someone else in the in the order entry or accounting department saying, okay, you know, this is a JCPenney order versus Sears and producing the right pack slip and under these rules I, I send an email and these ones I don't. Uh, that's just fraught for error and, and confusion. Uh, and you can really streamline it uh, automatically what we call this branded email or branded pack slip, I should say. Brian, you make a great point as well. Um, Speaking to sort of the customizability of the solutions here, we've had customers leverage that combo pack slip when, when they're asking folks to even drop ship on their behalf. In that example, Oslink saves the document as a PDF with the outbound shipping label, and we use the direct email notification to send that, that um, label and pack slip to their fulfillment vendor directly. So, so there's sort of a, the ability to combine these modules to support you know, a given process and ultimately generate an automated solution that based on a couple of simple modules and some business rules kind of manage the whole relationship between you know shipper uh, order source vendor I guess you'd say the person who's actually you know managing the customer relationship and ultimately the end customer themselves <clears throat> so here we have um, one of our more popular business rule based type modules um, a lot of folks ask us for this type of time and transit analysis as part of the major shipping holidays. So to set this up for, for the, the listeners here today, um, you have a customer or a, a re online retail vendor, let's say, that, that does uh, free shipping, guaranteed delivery by December 24th, just in time for the Christmas holiday. In our <clears throat> right side model here for service upgrade, Oslink can use that guaranteed service date and generate a shipping label with the appropriate service level to get it there by the guaranteed date at the lowest possible cost and still kind of you know hit that guarantee. So let's say on December 20th I have a shipment going from Boston, Massachusetts to um, Mobile, Alabama as an example. Well that might be a three day time in transit for ground so Oslink will choose ground in that option to get it there on December 23rd ahead of that sort of promised delivery date. If that same order comes in, however, on December 22nd, 
Oslink might choose a, a two-day air shipment in that example to hit that sort of required delivery window, and the customer doesn't have to sort of manually make that calculation looking up all the UPS information. The software just does it on the fly as it pushes information from the order source, whether it's an e-commerce site or an ERP, into UPS WorldShip. And then, of course, Oslink writes back you know, the upgraded service level in that example so that, you know, from a delivery standpoint, the customer is always hitting their promise time. The other example that we get caught a lot up with is the left model, the cost savings model. Folks will offer sort of shipment windows on their website. Hey, you know, your three options are, um, you know, ground shipping, expedited shipping, and premier shipping. And premier guarantees one to two days. Um, you know, the expedited shipping is between three to five days, and ground is just ground. Let's say, for example, uh, here in Boston, I have an order that comes in from New York City. Well, that might only be a two-day time in transit. As the shipper, my inclination would be to, to select two-day air for that shipment to get it there on time. But doing that analysis for specific uh, time in transit optimization, we realize that ground will get the package there still on time. In that example, we'll downgrade the service level to UPS ground, and it will still get there within that window the customer's ultimately selected up front. And the customer, uh, the vendor obviously realizes a bit of cost savings because they may have made a little bit more uh, on the shipping side of things specific to how the customer selected that expedited value when they, when they placed their order. So kind of we have a service upgrade model to hit a window, and we have a downgrade model to supply some cost savings. And we also have customers that actually utilize both of these um, kind of simultaneously. So very, very popular, and you know, it takes a lot of the decisioning out, helps manage cost for, for vendors specifically uh, in customer scenarios. A great example of this, this um, kind of live is, is a customer that we've recently worked with called Malibu Boats. Here in New England, um, we have a very short summer compared to most other places um, in the continental United States. And Malibu Boats' promise to their customers is, is you know, they don't want to have a boat like down and off the water for an extended period of time. So they offer two-day shipment on all of their boxes. And basically, um, when they fulfill their orders, Oz makes that programmatical decision to select between the UPS ground and second to air based on time and transit and either upgrade or downgrade that service to the appropriate to get it there you know, within that two-day window. Um, it eliminated ultimately four steps in their shipping process where they were manually searching for this information. And I mean, based on the 20% kind of shipping error cut, um, you know, they, they were sort of messing that up <laughs> one out of five times. So we were able to further streamline that. And um, I'm actually going back a little bit further now, but I think they've been a customer now for a couple of years. And, and you know, they, they were one of the key um, pioneers in this time and transit optimization when they, you know, asked us to build a solution specific like this. Now, once that integration, we often have customers as a whole, so we, a generic term handling, you know, automating the business rules. I mean, you know, the person at the, the ship station may have a, you know, a sticky that say orders over two hundred dollars require insurance, and they're turning that on in UPS World Ship. Uh, so that's an opportunity, really, to again streamline that, have that person focused on getting the shipments out the door, rather than remembering how to set things up or turn things on special options with with World Ship. And here are like, some of the examples that that we've uh, come across. You know, maybe. The charges for wholesale orders get written back to the accounting system, whereas e-commerce orders don't. That's a scenario. Uh, I mentioned the dollar value in terms of what might need to be insured. It could be based on destination, so maybe a proof of delivery. Based, it's going to a, a more urban environment. You don't want to leave it on the on the front uh, at the front door. Uh, you know, it might get um, taken, so maybe you need a proof of delivery. A, a signature is required. Really, any attribute of the shipment, of the destination to the consignee address um, that, that you can write a business rule around it could be weight, maybe picking the service based on weight and destination, uh, so sure post versus ground. All those type of rules can be automated with Auslink. Uh, and as customers' sales channels expand and their product mix expands, they tend to have more and more of these types of rules. Uh, and that becomes really fundamental, especially as you get it, you know, get to a busy time, making sure maybe temporary staffs coming on, working in the warehouse, 
they don't have to remember all those rules. They basically have to just remember that, hey, for this order, you scan the order and Auslink print the label with the right service and any associated documents with it. So this, to me, is really the, the bread and butter of what Auslink provides. Based on the different data sets we have available from UPS, some of the weather information that we have, and customers' needs to sort of, you know, kind of in, take a decision into the automated world and, and sort of add it to the, the solution, that's really where we have the ability to kind of configure a solution to support a customer's needs specifically. Um, you know, I mentioned sort of weather, and it's just another kind of great use case as to how business rules can specifically drive um, an, auto, you know, an automation based on a specific data set. Um, recently, UPS has put some focus on managing perishable shipments, um, and they've asked us to develop a solution for some of their customers that analyzes weather data to determine whether or not shipments can actually be sent. Um, this example that we have here, this is a specific customer scenario that the customer actually has asked us not to use their company info because they consider the, the partnership with UPS and Auslink to be sort of proprietary, sort of a key advantage within their infrastructure. They actually sell live insects, and as part of the kind of discovery process, we learned that um, reptiles won't eat dead insects. They need to be alive when they get to their ship to destination. But as we all know, everything sort of has an optimum temperature in which it can survive. So Auslink provides a front-end analysis tool to check destination temperature at pack time and sort of give them a pack factor. They, they, they include a series of heaters and coolers um, within their packaging to ensure that their product arrives at its destination alive. Now with live animal shipping, everything goes next day air, so we only have to analyze that next day type transaction to ensure that you know, the temperature is not going to be 10 below and that package will arrive safely. <clears throat> Then once we've done the analysis, they go pick the, sh uh, pick the product, pack it with the appropriate you know, pack values that we've returned them based on the business rules they've invoked, and then you know, kind of piggybacked off of the data set from the weather, they actually um, use the Auslink Pro software to integrate with their QuickBooks to then generate those shipping labels. So very quickly, they realized you know, some, some return on investment with just regard to lost shipments. Um, I think they were getting about 75% of the shipments to where they needed to go alive. And after completion of this pro project, um, that jumped up you know, to well above 90%. So a um, great example of just sort of maintaining perishable inventory in this example. Um, at this time, actually, we, we prepared a, a demonstration for you folks of the Weather API solution that we offer. I'm going to go ahead and just quickly change screens here. And as Justin's doing that, in terms of the you know, the, the customer types, we've seen that now that we implemented it the first time, probably 12, 18 months ago, uh, customers who are shipping meat, and they, want, they don't want it to be sitting in a UPS truck over the weekend, uh, based on temperature, uh, plants, flowers, really any of those sort of perishable class of goods, uh, now we've done that uh, multiple times. Uh, we have another case study in a second. Uh, but in addition to whether it should ship, also looking at packaging and adjusting that packaging. So, Right. Um, thank you. So the important thing to remember with, with the API integration specifically is that, again, the weather API is just a data set that Auslink asks for in real time. So in this example, we've sort of created a, a lowest common denominator type integration whereby the user actually processes a shipment for shipping normally with Auslink and they get some data back before they actually push that shipment into WorldShip. So in this example, I'm using shipping data entry from the Sage 100 software. And you'll notice here that I've pulled up an order that's ready to be shipped. You'll see that I don't have any freight amount here in this field. We don't have any tracking numbers present at this time. So simply by pulling this order up on the screen and clicking the UPS icon on the Auslink toolbar, Oslink automatically processes this request, and you'll see that the, the, the user gets a message box. So this particular ship to destination is in Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It gives you the predicted temperature for that destination for the next three days. Now, a lot of customers that ask us to automate um, weather API type engagements ask us to look at time and transit as well, because understanding how long it's going to take for that shipment to get there 
um, is sort of paramount because we want to make sure we get the accurate picture for the weather. So in this example, I have three-day ground time and transit, and I've got my, my temperatures for the next three days. If I'm the shipper, and based on my, my sort of you know, internal um, determination of, of what's appropriate whether or not to send this, I can click yes or no. By clicking no, Oslink just reverts back and you can process the next shipment. By clicking yes, Oslink allows that shipment to pass into the world ship software as it normally would. So I then can put my package on the scale, weigh it, process my shipment for my label. Apparently this one needs to have the address corrected. <laughs> I'll correct that. I'll go ahead and reprocess the shipment, get my shipping label, and as Oslink normally does for any shipping integration with WorldShip, we write back the shipment cost tracking numbers, uh, shipment weights, etc., back to this order. So if I bring up order number 194 again, you'll now see I have my freight amount, I've got my shipping weight, my number of pieces, and of course my UPS 1Z tracking number and ultimately the service level selected. So here, I've managed to get the shipment out safely using that weather data to determine whether it's safe to ship that package or not. Um, Brian had mentioned an additional case study, and, and I think positioning the, the bug company scenario we talked about a minute ago versus what the Growers Exchange does with the Weather API shows sort of the, the versatility specifically with regard to the, um, the integration models that are available. So the Growers Exchange is looking for a couple of different control mechanisms as part of their shipment creation. And we talked about Groupon and batch shipping and things like that earlier. This, the Growers Exchange specifically uses a Volusion website. And Oslink does sort of three levels of analysis for them, um, kind of based on some gates that we've put in that are based on business rule selection. So the Growers Exchange sells um, kind of small plant items, um, fresh herbs, small flowers, things like that. Um, and, the, the USDA actually puts out a, a, a publication that's called the Plant Hardiness Zone Chart that says, kind of based on what type of plant you, know, you have there, what sort of the safe, um, you know, safe temperature ranges and sort of living conditions for that particular uh, plant. Also, because they, they're very you know, seasonal business and because they, they, their inventory is totally based on their harvest, we use a simple access table that they upload, you know, how many of SKU A, how many of SKU B are available. So Oslink, as part of this batch process, ultimately only generates their shipping labels and pack slips at the end of the process, as long as that order kind of funnels through all the gates. The first gate is, is the inventory available. Oslink looks at that access table and determines if there's enough inventory in stock to fulfill that order. If there is, it moves to the next gate. What's the temperature at the, at the ship to destination? If the temperature is um, amenable for that shipment, Oslink then allows that to pass to the next gate. The last, the last gate is should it ship. So we use time and transit analysis in this example to determine if that package is going to sit on a truck or in a warehouse over the weekend. And in the example where it might, we offer the user an option to upgrade or downgrade the service or not even to ship that box in that example. And ultimately, like let's say as an example, they have 100 orders, 90 of which make it through all three gates. We pr reproduce the 90 combo pack slip shipping label for them. And then the 10, the 10 orders that are left over are just reanalyzed the next time they run the Oslink application, which typically is, is the next day. Um, they also get an, an, a sort of a, um, an error report that gives them visibility as to what orders didn't make it through the different gates and what the reason was. Uh, so now they have a very succinct sort of one button click and ship type solution that does all the analysis to ensure that these plants get to where they need to go alive and are shipped in a timely fashion so that they have the best chance to do so. This is a very sort of robust solution where Oslink is managing the entire decision making process just based on a few simple data sets. You know, time of transit information, weather information from the API, and then of course the order information as it originates from Volusion. Yeah, and I guess, as Justin highlighted, uh, it really does leverage you know, sort of the different elements and the sort of modularity of integration at different points.
And that brings us really to the end of this afternoon's session. Hopefully you got a number of good uh, examples and, and potentially allows you to get to creative juices thinking about how you might apply these in your environment. Um, there's a few questions that we'll address here. Um, and also, as you can see on the screen, there's a number of other resources. So we have a UPS dedicated microsite, which is at uh, www.ozdevelopment slash UPS ready. There are product brochures, pricing, case studies, um, short, you, you know, two, one, two minute videos of various solutions you can look at. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, which really has an extensive probably 40 or 50 different Again, pretty short YouTube videos. We try to keep them to a couple minutes to see, hey, is this something that can apply in your business? Uh, and then we have a whole set of case studies and slides that are available on SlideShare. And those are resources that you can use to, you know, A, evaluate how Auslink might help you, but also even share them with other people uh, in your company. You know, one of the things that I recommend to all these folks here uh, that typically inquire about anything Auslink is our Auslink user forum on LinkedIn. Uh, Brian here does a great job of managing content for that forum and generally includes kind of what's going on in the world of Auslink, uh, kind of shipping tip of the week, you know, how to, how to sort of get the most bang for your buck, things like that. Uh, if you're not uh, already part of that Oz user forum, great place to learn about sort of things that we're doing here, um, webinars that we're having, things of that nature, and of course the general contact information. We have a, you know, fully dedicated sales team here that I'm just one of many um, representatives, and, and certainly any one of us can give you a hand at any given time. If you have direct questions, we're always happy to uh, jump on the phone and, and talk through it with you. Uh, so here's a question. Um, uh, I want to do some batch shipping, but I'm not sure I have the right information set up in my systems to do that. How do I go about evaluating whether that's a feasible option, especially with the sort of new dimensional changes? So that's a great question. Um, the, the answer is quite simple. Generally speaking, Auslink will need to manage the data from whatever that order source is as part of a batch um, based on the field that WorldShip requires to create a shipment. So in that example, dimensions, the shipment weight, number of boxes, um, obviously the address information, things of that nature. And then of course on the ERP side, we're going to need some type of indicator as to how to include those items in the batch. That might be assigning a batch, you know, an, an order to a batch ID that might be, you know, hey, just look at all the orders that have today's date on them. Um, from, a, from a processing throughput standpoint, the world ship fields required to ship are, are certainly paramount. And then we can, you know, as long as we have that data available, we can automate the batch process based on the, the uh, sort of requirements that the ERP has based on process. Okay, good, good. Um, and here's a question. It just came in. I'll jump. It's, does Oz plus uh, include the use of the new UPS ground with freight pricing format? It certainly does. Um, there's a couple of different registration types that, that we need to do through UPS Plus to get access to freight and sort of accessorial services. Um, oddly for UPS Plus delivers information specific to your account. You register your UPS account. So any of those accessorials that are available or signature services that are available through your account structure with UPS, Oddlink has the mechanism to display including hundredweight and sure post as well. Um, okay, great, thanks. Here's another question. I actually recently started selling on through Amazon and they, they don't want uh, an email going out to the customer from us. It's really a you know Amazon branded uh, we're drop ship. How do I manage those emails versus the emails I'd like to send out to my regular customers? Typically that's done with an indicator on an order. So Assuming that you also have orders coming in from, say, phone, fax, and email, a simple field indicator that tells us whether or not that order came from Amazon will allow Oslink to decide whether or not to create that direct email template or to, to not create that direct email template, to use your Amazon orders as an example. So customers that, that don't come in through Amazon will receive a notification, and the ones that do come in through Amazon will receive a notification uh, directly from Amazon. Um, incidentally, Oslink also has the ability to put tracking information back into Amazon uh, automatically as part of that shipping process direct from your ERP, say like QuickBooks as well. So um, that process can be fully automated. The, the solution can make the decision as to whether or not an email is appropriate based on the order source. 
and getting that tracking number back in is really critical for you know ratings and, and the relationship with Amazon and the other marketplaces. So, um, okay, that uh, brings the end to the questions. I'd like to thank everyone this afternoon or this morning if you're out west for attending. Uh, again, hopefully you have picked up a couple tips that you can apply. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at 508-366-1969. Um, or you can send an email to sales at pawsdevelopment.com.